When talking about our favorite and greatest superheroes in all of superhero lore, we often always go to Marvel and DC. Yeah, you know, the big two. They have always been the big two, and I feel like they're always gonna be the big two. Definitely, but there are so many characters outside of these universes that are so memorable that have made their own stamp on the superhero genre. And today, we're gonna be talking about them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Thomas. I'm Merlin. Together, we are the Comic Lads. And today, we're gonna be narrowing down who is the greatest superhero outside of DC and Marvel. Before we get into it, guys, question of the week. Who is your favorite superhero outside of Marvel and DC? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps us out like you wouldn't believe. And consider subscribing. Weekly videos now two times a week <laughs> on all things comics. Join the comic lads. Become one with the lads. All right, let's get into it. A little honorable mention here. I feel like this will be on everyone's lists. We're talking about Spawn. But he's like not even a superhero you know, he's like a jealous, like, vigilante character. Yeah, definitely. We're talking about strictly superheroes, but we felt like we had to include him on this list. Just because of his popularity and his impact on, like, not just the superhero genre, but the comic book industry. You know, when he came out, he literally tore up the scene. Spawn was more popular than, like, Batman and shit. I think he deserves his flowers for that. If we're talking about greatest character designs in history, Ooh. he's definitely on the list, though. A hundred. When I see him, like, dude, Todd McFarlane hooked with the Spawn. Bond design. Well, he was like, yo, what if I gave Venom, like, chains and a cape? And I'm like, coolest thing ever. Kind of sick. Let's go. <laughs> okay, but guys, we have three more other prominent heroes we want to rank. And starting off, this one has such a special place in my heart. Yeah, this, this, is, this is number one for you. This might be number one for me. <laughs> and we're talking about Ben 10. Before we even get into the character, you can't see. This I have like a secret backdoor Ben 10 video. No, no, dude, you can't see, but I've got a big smile on my face. Before we even talk about the character itself, can we just ignore Knowledge how banging the theme song was. Oh my god, dude, it bangs. You got super bad. Oh, she's oh, okay. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons. My parents were woken up at like 6 a.m. every Saturday to that theme song being blasted throughout the house. So if you see him, you might be in for a big surprise. He'll turn into an alien before your very eyes. Ben 10 is such a cool character. And a lot of people really just like the original Ben 10 show. And not so much like Alien Force or anything like that. Which definitely should be given a chance, guys. But I think if you're watching them all throughout each series, seeing his progression from like a kind of little snot nose kid yeah a little snot nose kid you know voiced by tara strong the oh, way oh yeah it's tara strong exactly Crazy. all the way up to him being voiced by yuri lowenthal whoa it's just a great progression he becomes so selfless as a character throughout alien force he also has like one of the coolest power sets ever it's such interesting storytelling because you have this amazing power but it's also kind of limited in its function it's kind of like spider-man with web shooters you know what i mean like when the writer needs there to be a kind of oh no moment oh he ran out of web fluid oh he turned back into regular ben 10 yeah. you know what i mean and also sometimes the watch will malfunction the desired alien that he wants to become switches to something else he'll be put into these different situations where it's like i need strength to fight this villain and he tries to turn into like a strength-based character but instead he turns into like a super smart character or a super speed character and in those situations the writers really get to play around with ben solving these in ways that wouldn't be the first thing that he thinks of in the moment What's the name of the fire one? Be Blast? Yeah, no, he's the no. coolest <laughs> ever. He's so dirty. If you guys have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But there's an episode specifically, Ben 10 has like a really bad flu. Mm. And he turns it to Heat Blast and he has blue flames. Oh, that's it's, sick. It's like the coolest shit ever, dude. Ah, shit. Honestly, I have such a special place tomorrow for Ben 10. He's goaded. Nice. I think he belongs on this list. Definitely. Next up, guys. Number two. Or I guess number four. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Number two, guys, we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Teenage nice. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles count it on. One, two, three, four, turtles. 
<laughs> Dude, another Baggin theme song. Oh my god. TMNT is so awesome. It's such a weird concept. The fact that we've grown up with it, it's such a staple in my head. I'm like, turtles that are teens and mutants and also ninjas. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, it's no, sick. when you when you hear it on paper, you're like, what? what? Yeah, and you're like, what? <laughs> like, what, dude? Like, and then you see it and you're like, oh, yeah, no, it's so sick. And I love it too because you kind of have to group them all into one yes. character, you know what I mean? But they all have such different personalities. And I always love talking to people about like, who is your favorite? You're a Raphael guy. Big Raph guy. Oh, Huge God. Raph guy. They all have their different positives and negatives to it. Yes. It's great because you can identify it with a different one. If you like someone with a little bit more brains, you got Donatello. He was you're, always my favorite girl. Yeah, I knew you're a Donnie guy. Right? But that's mostly just because I love characters that have staffs. I think they're just badass. You know, like Tim Drake, that's a big reason why I've always loved him in the DC universe. He's also sick because, you know, he's the brains of the group, but like compared to Donnie, like I feel like most of them are like dumb as bricks. My favorite nowadays is definitely Mikey. Nice. Yeah, okay. He's got the skateboard, you know what I mean? Always munching on some pizza. He's the funny kind of lively one of the bunch. He's got the pizza van, which gives him like a couple extra points. Yeah, and I also <laughs> love, you know, we're talking about positives and negatives to each of the character. I love the characterization of Mikey being the most talented of the four, but also the most like carefree and that kind of holds him back. It holds him back. And it's that kind of writing that makes these characters really dynamic. You know what I mean? Feel like actual people with flaws and strengths. And even going beyond the turtles themselves, the lore of the TMNT world is actually like sick and kind of expansive and it gets like weird and cosmic and interdimensional too. It's not just about ninjas. It kind of channels the same energy that like the Naruto series does. Oh yeah? Where there's this like multi-generational war. There's always like the people of each generation leading the fight against the other. Yeah. Whether it was Shredder and Team NT or whatnot. Yeah, it's kind of like there's like always a totemic avatar of each side. Exactly. But guys, please let us know before we move on to number one, who is your favorite Ninja Turtle? Yeah, question of the week part two. Who's your favorite turtle? Let us know in the comments down below. Yes. Okay, guys. We've reached the number one superhero outside of Marvel and DC. We absolutely could not choose anyone on this list besides... I feel like he just took the whole world by storm. Well, like when the comic came out, everyone was like, holy shit, he's like Superman and Spider-Man, but like there's blood. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say it borrows all of the best qualities from both the DC and Marvel and kind of channels it into this realistic universe, but not in the same kind of grim way that the boys does, where yeah. you're just like depressed and there's no good people. It's not cynical and gross and like kind of just taking the piss out of the superhero genre. It takes all the best parts and all the all the most interesting parts from each superhero universe and molds them into this one where all types of superhero stories can exist and the character of Mark Grayson is so cool and so relatable and fun to root for. It strikes the balance of they can tell kind of slightly darker stories if they want that you wouldn't see in Marvel or DC but they still have the hope and optimism that the characters in Marvel or DC will have. You know Absolutely. What I mean? It not only like homages and honors all the greatest elements from superhero comics it also flips a lot of them on their heads. We've seen the trope of evil Superman kind of done to death, but I can confidently say Invincible does it the best out of all of them. Prior to a few years ago, it was very, very refreshing too to see. I know for a fact everyone when they were watching that first episode of Invincible, oh well, this is kind of boring. This is just like a you know, Superman, like, you know, he's just going through the motions of, oh, what the fuck? Omni-Man killed everybody. And you're like, oh. Dude, I'm pretty sure like I watched the first episode with you yeah. and you're like, oh, are you going to love this? and that was verbatim what you just said yeah. exactly happened. You're like, oh, dude, this is kind of, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I was like, dude, another superhero, like, Superman story, you know what I mean? Like, what's gonna happen? And that moment where he, like, kills the Guardians of the Globe or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're called. And it catches you so off guard. It goes to the darkest and goriest, but still manages to not be the boys. You know what yeah, I mean? But that's exactly why Mark is so great, is yeah. that he doesn't become a product of how crap the world is. He's still so positive and such a force for good. And that's, like, what's so great about all the best 
superheroes in general too is that their backgrounds are what shape what kind of person they are. With Superman you got Martha and John Ken. With Spider-Man you got Uncle Ben and Aunt May. You know what I mean? And Marky as his mother. It just makes him such a great character for the entire series I feel. Absolutely. And I think just from the success and love that not just the show but the comic book itself has garnered. I think cements Invincible as one of the greatest superheroes of all time. Definitely. Up there with the likes of the Justice League and the Avengers and stuff like that. 100%. But guys that is our list. If you enjoyed the video please give it a like. It really helps us out. And we'll see you guys soon. We love you. We love you dearly. Peace. 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 Peace.